This video is going to talk you through the smaller parts of Duff Chapter 4 after the prepositions which we've already covered. They're all little things but they're important things that will help the smoothing out of your reading of Greek. The first thing is the difference between an instrument and an agent. I've given you an example sentence, the door was opened. This could be completed in at least two ways. You could say with a key or you could say by me. In these examples, with a key is giving you the instrument that was used to open the door. By me gives you the agent, the person who did it. In English, we're going to make this difference using prepositions. We don't have a complex inflection system to show these things. In Greek, you're going to be able to do it partly using your cases. With a key will be a straightforward dative. The word for key is actually clase. So in Greek, that would actually be clady. If you want to say by me, you now need to use a preposition, hypo. And as you saw earlier, hypo takes a genitive. So me is then going to be mu or emu. We'll learn more about those in chapter nine. So instruments, you use a dative. Agents, you use a preposition and a genitive. So you need to think carefully, is this an inanimate thing or is this some kind of person? Now, obviously, if you take something like the Holy Spirit, well, then you have to beg the question, what is the Holy Spirit? Is it an instrument or an agent? It's not always entirely obvious whether you're talking about an instrument or an agent, but generally the language will make the distinction quite obviously. Duff finally has a little comment about another meaning of the word with. You've already seen with meaning along with, and that would be the preposition meta or sun if you want to mean along with. So we're disambiguating English words with what English is trying to do with those words. And this difference between the letters on a page and the sense that those letters are trying to communicate is really important when it comes to trying to understand that language. The second point to think about in this chapter are questions. Greek asks questions in very simple ways on the whole. If you look in the vocab for this chapter, you'll see that there are two question words, pause and poo. These are called interrogatives question words. And you'll notice that they both start with a p. And actually that's quite characteristic of Greek. The interrogatives may well start with a pi. And therefore if you see a little word beginning with a p, it's worth stopping and thinking, could this be a question? Pause, how, who, where. Not all questions have an interrogative in them. You could say, are you going to the cinema tonight? As opposed to you are going to the cinema tonight, where in English all we've done is mess around with word order. Now word order will be important for Greek as well. So keep an eye on word order and see if you can get any feel for how it changes with the questions. So you've got interrogatives as an option. You've got word order as an option, but you also do have some punctuation that helps you see that there is a question Punctuation is, of course, editorial, but what looks like a semicolon would equate to the Greek question mark. So do read a sentence in full before you try and translate it or understand it, because you might not spot that it is a question just from the words. You need to look for the punctuation as well. The final thing in this chapter is how to do negatives. You've been given three words for not. U, ook, 
and oof. That's going to vary depending on what comes next. Remember that I've said that Greek is a very phonetic language. It matters what letters come next. It's a very oral language. So you've got to be thinking about what you can hear and how you're going to smooth that out. So you're going to use oo. Duff's example is blepo. You're going to use ook before something like akuo. And ooch before something like heorisko. The key things to note, u comes before a consonant, uk comes before a vowel, and uch comes before a vowel with a rough breathing. We can write that in, u before a consonant, uk before a vowel with a smooth breathing, and ooch before a vowel with a rough breathing. The other thing to note about Greek negatives is they stack, they don't cancel. So in English, we can't say, I know nothing. That becomes, I know something. In Greek, however, that is exactly what you'd say. You'd say, ou gynosko, ou den. Here you're negating the verb and you're negating the object of that verb. So if something can be negated in that phrase, it will be negated once it's negative. So Greek negatives stack, they don't cancel. So that really does mean I know nothing, despite having two negatives in it. So when you're reading a Greek sentence, keep an eye on the negatives, because once a sentence is negative, the overall effect has got to be negative, however many negatives are in there. And that can sometimes feel a bit counterintuitive for native English speakers. That's all the grammar for this chapter. What I'd like you to start thinking about now is summarising things. And I'm using the dative as an example. You've already seen three uses of the dative. After certain verbs, after prepositions, and instrumentally. You saw pisteuro, governed a dative, object. You saw prepositions like sun, or n took a dative and you saw that if you wanted to say with something you needed a dative. I suggest that you start up your own notes with a heading for each of the cases and as we meet new versions of them you add them to that list then when we get to revision, you'll have a coherent summary of what different cases can do. We will look at this when we come to revision, but if you make a note and start it now, life will be a lot simpler.